All right, this is a part two uh, to the previous video, MTAC addressing the effects of a wicked seed sown in an idle mind. Of course, if you're watching this video, it means that you are definitely on another journey to truth in life where we utilize the power of truth. And I do mean the power of truth to be set free from the chains of deception. Those chains aren't on your wrist or your ankles, so stop looking there. They are on your mind, but this truth can and will set you free. I wanted to go a little bit deeper uh, as it relates to what the scriptures say about the seed demon. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a demon on the loose. This demon is sowing seeds of darkness throughout the land. Um, and people want to believe as if the enemy is in some sort of distant, um, elusive place Um or some sort of amorphous, um, intangible blob uh, floating around causing mischief. Uh, but we as believers adhere to the truth, and the truth is written in the Most High Yah's Word. Um, we're going to see what the Scripture have to say about where uh, the enemy is. Where is the devil? Uh, this wicked seed sore. We're going to go first to the book of Revelations, um, chapter 12, and we're going to start at um, verse 12. And it says, um, Rejoice! ye heavens, that means in the spiritual realm, in uh, the kingdom of heaven, and ye that dwell in them, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. A woe is a warning. So he's warning those of us who live here on earth. Why, what's the warning about? It says in of the sea, no matter where you are here on earth, whether on land or uh, out on ship, it says, For the devil, the wicked one, the enemy, Satan, is come down unto you having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time, or a short chronos. And um, the Greek translation it is referred to as chron. So omni crone or omni means all things relating to, crone means time in the Greek uh, translation. The um, Well, we're not going to get into the etymology of the lexicals or uh, terms, backgrounds, and their roots or whatever. Uh, we're going to just make it as simple as possible. The enemy is here on the earth. It says the enemy have come down unto you, um, having great wrath. Verse 13, it says, And when the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, the demons, and his wicked followers, his wicked seed, saw he had been cast down where? To the earth. So Satan is no longer in the heavens. He is here on earth. People take it out of context when they say he's the prince and the power of the air. He rules or, or is the principality of the air waves, that's a whole other subject within itself, but he's here on this earth. 
called, who do you think is doing all this mess? These aren't the children of the Most High. This isn't holy angels uh, walking around causing mischief. Uh, these are um, works of the devil, works of the children of the devil, the kingdom of darkness uh, amongst the children of light. And we're going to get to it because, like I said, um, there is an enemy on the loose. There is a uh, seed sowing, wicked seed sower demon on the loose. And your boy, more than a conqueror, is here to grab that demon and body slam it right back to the pits of hell with the Holy Spirit power of truth. And so we're going to go to another verse before we actually get into uh, the meat of today's lecture and that's going to be the book of Job chapter 1 uh, if you already have it you can start reading it I'm still trying to feather through the pages alright so the book of Job chapter 1 All right, and we're going to start um, at verse 6, and it says, Now there was a day when the sons of Yah, these are um, the angels, the Elohim, came to present themselves before the Adonai, the Master, uh, the, and... Um, Spirit and in truth, Yeshua. And Satan, the devil, the wicked one, the enemy that is trying to destroy you. And we're going to get into how he's destroying the world through these uh, seeds that are being sown into their mind. Uh, and it says Satan came also among them. He wasn't somewhere off by himself doing, you know what I mean, his thing from afar. No, he had infiltrated the children of the Most High. Let's read this again. And we know uh, the six tactics that the enemy used in order to try to destroy a child of the kingdom of heaven. And that is, you're probably already seeing them, observation, surveillance, recon. That's number one. You have to watch. You have to observe you. They're watching you. They're watching you on your job. They're watching you in your community. They're watching you in the stores. Uh, they're watching you um, everywhere you go. Gathering data, analyzing, um, recon. That's a military word for those of you who have military or um Law enforcement backgrounds. You know what I'm talking about. Recontinence. Um, number two, infiltration. And that's what the enemy had done here. Number three, manipulation, the deception, the gaslighting, the lying, the um, secret society um, restricting of bringing things to the light and we know what the scripture says about that. Anyone who um, operates in darkness do so because their deeds are wicked. And that's in the book of John, um, I believe, chapter 4. And you can go read that at a different time. So we have observation and surveillance, number one. Infiltration, number two. Manipulation and deception, number three. Intimidation, number four. Uh, domination number five before number six elimination that's the enemy step so um, here in verse six he had already infiltrated uh, which means he had been watching them he's been watching you he's watching all of those of us who are sealed in the Holy Spirit in the Holy Ruach children of the Most High uh, let's read this one more time and it says now there was a day when the Elohim or the sons of Yah, came to present themselves before the Adonai. This is uh, a title given to uh, Yeshua Hamashiach, or Jesus the Christ, um, who have all powers both in heaven and on earth. And so uh, when you see that uh, uppercase 
it means the is referring to him alone. Sometimes you'll hear that word Lord referring to some lesser um, with that title, but in this case, it's referring to our Savior, the embodiment of the Most High. And so, and it says, and Satan came among them. He had infiltrated them. He was among them. Look around you. Look in your family. Look in, on your job. Look into your community. Look in your friend circle and see um, if you can identify that Judas, that Satan that have infiltrated uh, your environment. Verse 7, and it says, And the Adonai Yah said unto Satan, the wicked one, the devil, the evil, deceptive seed sore, um, where cometh thou? Where did you come from? And let's see what he answered. And Satan, the devil, that old dragon, that slithering snake, those wicked um, children of darkness, where did they come from? Or where were they? And he answered in the Adonaiah and said, from going to and fro in the earth. He's, he, they're, they're, they're here. Don't let anyone tell you any different. They're here. And what are they doing? They're sowing seeds. They're sowing seeds of darkness. They're trying to plant and cultivate a um, anti Eden for Satan's kingdom. If Eden's the kingdom of the Most High, where uh, the children of righteousness was given power, rule, and authority to cultivate it in a way that would be inducive um, for to, to create an extension of heaven on earth, then Satan have his workers out here, his wicked seed the slithering snakes sowing seeds, and they're operating underneath the spirit of Omicron. This spirit is working through them in this season. We know, um, I don't want to take you guys too deep, but uh, there are certain wicked spirits or principalities that begin to take control in certain seasons. You will begin to see uh, a different type of wicked spirit uh, operating at different times, maybe in a region or uh, whatever the case may be, but that is um, how the enemy operates. He sends forth these fallen angels that uh, master certain arts of wickedness to um, carry out their part a, as a preliminary step to set up the um, platform for the Antichrist uh, to stand on. And so right now we're dealing with the Omicron uh, spirit and we're going to um, talk about that. Uh, what is happening in today's time? There are, been, there are seeds being sown in the minds of the people and these are righteous seeds that are being sown. We're going to allow the scriptures to uh, talk about it. We're in a time era where the enemy is disguising his wicked seed sowing uh, and under different auspices. It may be underneath the disguise or the mask, uh, hence the mask. That's one of the meanings of the mask, uh, the hiding the true face and the nature of what you're looking at. You can't really see it because it's hidden underneath something. He's disguising or masking. You may have that mask on your face, and that's fine if your your occupation or whatever it is uh, requires for one. But he's masking and disguising his true agendas underneath different auspices. It may be underneath national security, OSHA threat assessment protocols. It may be underneath a brigade of uh, health you know, pandemic protocols as if these wicked ones actually care about your well-being. The same ones that will take your 18-year-old kids fresh out of high school, send them overseas 
to get their heads blown off so they can have access to oil, money, gold. Um, and that's what their little G-O-D stands for, gold, oil, and drugs, or, and so forth. You think they actually care about your well-being? The same ones that will market drugs um, to through these pharmaceutical multi-trillion-dollar corporations for your kids to be, grow up and become mentally unstable, sterile, um, physically ill, and have to depend on another substance to counteract the. Um, side effects of the original substance uh, that they gave them. You think they care about you? The same ones that put up more abortion clinics than um, family help uh, community centers. You think they actually care about you? No. The, there's a seed demon out here that don't care about you, but its objective and agenda is to sow a seed into your mind, and they have planted this seed in most of the people's mind. Uh, and we must be awoke and aware of the enemy's devices, tactics, its slithering operations, how they move, what their real agenda and objective is. That means you got to have sp spiritual visions to see them as they are and not as they appear to be. I can walk inside of a restaurant, and if people are sitting down, I can tell which ones were planted there for me. Um, if I go to a motel or wherever it is, and I n never make it known, I don't freak out or anything. I could be talking to someone, and the Most High through um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit will let me know what the true agenda is. This isn't something that is just... Um, unique to me, it is a gift that all of us uh, have as children of Yah. And if you're someone who uh, have been filled with the Holy Spirit and you want to uh, be able to um, exercise those gifts, learn how to activate and operate in uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, I will be doing a video on that, or at least I intend on doing a video on that. Uh, but right now we're talking about this seed demon that is on the loose. This wicked seed demon that is on the loose. And so here we are having the enemy operate underneath different disguises, whether it be national security, community safety protocols, whatever the case may be. Um, health, occupational um, guidelines, all that malarkey is just a cover-up for the spirit of darkness working behind it for a different agenda. So we're going to the book of Proverbs. Now, I intended to say something else, but uh, it, it doesn't slip my mind. So we're just going to go uh, to the book of Proverbs for those of you who have been negatively affected by uh, different seeds that have been sown amongst your friends, your family, your social support, um, your work, whatever the case may be. And people who you loved and respected and thought you had a cordial or close relationship with now is operating underneath a different spirit. Why is that? The reason why is because a seed was sown in to them behind your back, uh, and now it's starting to grow and manifest itself. It manifests itself through the way they think, the way that they respond, the way that they feel. So you got to ask yourself, what, you know, um, um, what is the root? What was what seed caused you to? act the way that you're acting. If you're acting holy, then it was a holy seed that was planted in you. If you're acting wicked and you're going around gang stalking or whatever the case may be, uh, then it's a seed of wickedness, darkness that has been planted in you. But we're 
here in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, and some of you know where I'm going to go with this. So, um, this Omnichrome seed demon must be exposed and sent right back to the pits of hell. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do that with truth. And so, um, there's a, there's a lot. I, uh, had a thought on my mind, if I can get to it. If it come back to me, I'm going to share it with you. It was a very powerful um, thought. Um, and <clears throat> wanted to share it with you. Uh, yeah. It says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Most High, Yah. Believe it or not, you may not want to accept it, but um, there is a saying that... Uh, the older folks used to say they say uh, 99 percent of people will stab you in the back after putting on an i like you act so 99 percent of the people will stab you in the back after putting on an i like you act 99 percent of the people will put you down if you're not around. 99% of the people uh, will, um, I can't remember how it goes, but once it comes back to me, um, I'm definitely going to share that with you. And But only 1% will stay true because that's just what they do. you got to find that 1% in your life, and that's who you draw close to. And so uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 8. We're going to start at verse 8 because many of these people in our lives are mentally and spiritually asleep. So unless you have the Holy Spirit to be able to interpret the word, You'll misinterpret and misapply uh, this powerful word of truth, uh, and it'll have little to no effect um, in your life. This is why you got to pray. Read Acts chapter 1 through 5 and learn about tearing and waiting and praying and petitioning the Most High for the fulfilling and the manifestation of the Holy Ruach of Dash or the Holy Spirit of truth to um, be gifted uh, in you. And so, verse 8 says, um, sorry, uh, verse 9, it says, Oh, how long will thy sleep, O sluggard? These people are asleep. They're mentally and consciously sleep all around us, and you can, that goes without saying. They're not woke at all. Uh, they are asleep. They're, that means that they're unable to really um, critically think and see things as they are. Their narrative is given to them. I was speaking to um, a young man uh, down in um, Sterlington, uh, Louisiana on yesterday and he was a manager and of course he's been at that store for several years and you know I told him I said you know you've um, been here for a while he said I've been here for five years and I said the other faces that I'm used to seeing every time that I come here um, are always changing like they don't last long why is that and so his response was they just don't want to work and then so I began to ask him about the pay rates and the hours and things of that nature. And he never would give me a realistic response. So I looked it up. And the starting wage um, at that location was seven twenty-five an hour. Now, if you're a mother, if you're a father, 
if you're an adult and you're single, we know that 725 isn't going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. You can't pay your bills. You can't, it, even if you didn't have a car note and car insurance, you, you couldn't buy your food off that. Um, with uh, the average one or two bedroom apartment being somewhere around $700 a month, uh, you couldn't pay for um, that. Even if you worked forty, if you worked forty hours a week and got a little some overtime, you couldn't pay for that. Uh, you couldn't buy your clothes. You couldn't buy, you know, your health essentials and things of that nature. But in his mind, he could not see the root cause of why people would stay a little while and and be rationed out on average thirty hours a week and then leave. The reason was too deep for a sleep mind to be able to to see the root cause of that. So uh, this is what it's referring to. It says, um, how long will you sleep? How long are these people going to stay asleep? How long is it uh, before uh, they wake up? How long is, is it going to take for them to wake up to the fact that the enemy's been lying to them the whole time, deceiving them, and don't have their best entrance at heart. How long is it going to be? Is it going to be too late when they have received the mark of the beast and they're on their way to damnation? We're going to get to that. Let me write down a reminder so I can answer that at the end of this video. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll just put a fold in uh in here to remind me where to go. Uh this see demon, we gotta get to it though. I don't want to get distracted. Let me just put a little mark in there and that'll remind me. So if if your mind is idle if your mind is asleep, the enemy can sow a seed. This omnichrome can sow a seed inside of you. But if you're awoke, if you're alive in the spirit, it says those that are quickened in the spirit, meaning awake, awoke mentally, spiritually, he can't do nothing with you. He can't go to work. I believe it's uh, Philippians chapter 4 and 8. Those people who are thinking on the right things, on heavenly things, on truthful things on um, the holy things, and that's the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Go read that for yourself. It instructs you on how a righteous child of the Most High thinks so that the enemy can't gain access to their, to plant a seed in the garden of their mind. Uh, so it goes on to say, O sluggard, um, when will um, hold on? When will thy arise out of thy sleep? When are these people ever going to wake up? I don't know. It, it's baffling me. I got family members that are asleep. I got people that I used to consider to be friends that are asleep, coworkers that are asleep, strangers all around gang stalking that are sleep they're zombies when are they going to wake up i don't know i keep praying for them to wake up i keep putting out this truth we keep on doing this hoping that they wake up but they love their sleep let's um continue it says in verse 10 it says yet a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the um hands to sleep so shall that poverty come up on them. And this par this poverty, we know that the Bible is spiritual, so it's not talking about no carnal, earthly, wicked, satanic dollars. That ain't what it's talking about. The Most High could care less about that. But these prosperity pastors and preachers will get up there and make it seem like that's what this word applied for. The Most High don't care about your wicked dollars. He don't care. He, he's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. 
and provide what you need in order to survive in this world um, until he set up his kingdom here. So he's talking about a spiritual poverty, a mental poverty, an emotional poverty that these people are in. And this is verse 10. Um, and that's verse 11. I do apologize. Uh, the light in here, as you can tell, is very dim. And it says, As one who travelled, let me get, try to get some more light in here. In thy won't as an armed man. So uh, they believe they can steal what you have. They believe they can steal your joy. They believe they can steal um, your kingdom position. That's what the enemy tried to do. He know he's illegitimate as a ruler of this earth. He's taken the throne illegitimately, and Christ came to um, put the righteous king back on the throne. Now, he is the king both in heaven and in earth, but he's allowing the enemy who has a short time um, to to sit on his wicked little throne and play out the destiny of this uh, time period before him and his wicked seed, these tares are gathered up and cast into outer darkness forever. So this is the time of the end. Um, he knows he have this Omicron have to come this time uh, before the enemy is um, destroyed him and his kingdom and all his wicked followers his sleep sheep being led to the slaughter uh, let's go to verse 12 and it says a naughty person here's the seeds sore when it says a naughty person the, the word the scriptures sometimes use different terminologies to refer uh, to um, a certain spirit right so it says a naughty person a wicked one this is a this is the wicked seed sore we're going to get to this wicked seed sword. What do this wicked seed sword do? This demon that's walking around um, from place to place operating in the society that is asleep. Verse 12, it says, they walk it around, just like we read in the book of Job, Satan going to and fro. This one mind is uh, uh, operating through those that are asleep with a forward mouth, these stalkers, these um, tear, these people calling folks on the phone, sending messages, spreading lies, rumors, slander, getting crisis actors to um, present false information and false truths about you, uh, intimidating your family to partake in this garbage. And then they run and they hide because they can't confront you directly. I actually came around just to see if anybody show up because I was going to address some stuff and nobody showed up. This is how they operate, but they talk about me behind my back. Um, but I just have to interject that for those that are concerned. That's what I said um, when um, earlier. Your boy confront things face to face. The enemy knows he don't have a foot to stand on, so they... Uh, tell everybody, hush up, stay quiet, and tuck your butt off uh, in a corner somewhere because once this man step out with this Holy Spirit truth, he's going to crush that demonic spirit in you. And the, the enemy don't want that demonic spirit of truth crushed. So he will run away from those of us who are empowered individuals with the power, as it's spoken of in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 20, to crush the head of the enemy. Let your boy get this stuff together. I do apologize because I got a little height and I probably need to take a breath and just calm down. But I want to be able to expose this. Verse 12, let's focus. A wicked person, a naughty person, 
a wicked one, this omnicrom spirit, this see sowing spirit, it walketh around just like in the book of Job, sinking um, to and fro throughout the earth, seeking someone to lie on, seeking someone to deceive, seeking someone to um, let's let's just let the word uh, tell you it says walking around for it. verse thirteen. He winketh with his eye, this wicked spirit. What do the winking of the eye? If someone's telling you something or telling someone else something and they turn around and they wink their eye at you, it means that they're <clears throat> lying and deceiving, right? So it, it's saying that they use a code of deception, manipulation. Uh, he speaketh with his feet. And that means they, they, they're sending codes and signals. We who are targeted or have been targeted individuals, um, chosen elect um, individuals going through the fiery trial persecution, we know about this, how they will send Masonic uh, signals and codes to each other through body language. Um, he teaches with his fingers. They, they use hand signs and hand gestures, throwing up the 666, throwing up um, the little pyramid or covering up the one eye putting the finger across the mouth, whatever it is that they do uh, in order to communicate to others underneath the control of this omnichrome, wicked, demonic spirit of deception. Um, verse 14, it says, Forwardness is in his heart. This deception, the the." Uh, the thought, the agenda to destroy someone, to deceive someone, um, to subjugate someone is in his heart. This darkness is in this wicked, demonic, omnichrome spirit heart and it's operating through the people around you. Spirit needs bodies in order to operate through. He devises mischief um, continually. Continually, it's never ending. Me and my family have been awakened to this happening to me, what I've been going through for over a decade, and it's non-stop. You can't get to the root cause. You try to get a court case. Uh, they throw it out. They dismiss you. Uh, people have been put on um, clandestine, uh, classified um, uh, restrictions, all of that. But this is what they do they uh, devise it mischief they the they plan they plot they strategize they counterintelligence program is that's what it means the counterintelligence program the black operations against the black community to to opt out the blackness um or the children of the most high yah and those that are from the gentile nations and grafted in by faith, um, their counterintelligence, this systematic plotting uh, through governmental principalities uh, is spoken of here. And here it goes. What do we do ultimately? It's in the book uh, of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 14. At the end, and he soweth seeds of discord. Seeds of discord. Discord, if you look it up, it means division, disagreement, uh, putting one at odds against another. And that's what have happened in this season. How did your family, as Christ said, become your enemy? How did your friends turn against you? Why is it that the community that used to love and accept you now look at you like the black plague? It's because a seed demon, an omnichrome demon, have sowed that seed into them. And that's not all uh, that they have sown. They've sown seeds of fear into the minds of the people through uh, the news media, constantly pumping seeds of fear through the media every time they open up their phones a news um, article pops up about how many 
so-called people done died from the you-know-what. Every time they turn on the television, you can't even get through a show without them mentioning that, you know, C-word 19 a million times in different variants, and we'll explain that in another video. What is they doing? You, you're listening to your favorite song and on the radio, and they interrupt it just to sow that seed or that discord. Now, that seed has been planted in these people's mind. And once that seed has been planted into their mind, it then works its way as it grows to root itself in the heart. If you know anything about uh, plants or um, the you've ever studied botany, which is the Anyway, just go look it up. Botany, the study of plant life and things of that nature, starts off as a seed. And as that seed began to germinate and blossom, it began to set root first. And the first place that the root goes is into the heart of the earth. Just If you're the, the, the soil where that seed is planted, it's going to work its way from your mind. It's going to come in through your ear. It's going to be planted in your mind first. And if you don't get it out, it'll germinate and it will begin to sprout roots before it manifests itself. And it'll go into your heart, your emotions. And once that thing have gained roots into your emotions, whether it's a spirit of fear, um, a spirit of hate, a spirit of uh, disdain for someone else, whatever this seed is, once it gains root into your emotions, it will begin to manifest itself through your actions. So it becomes prevalent to someone the way that you behave around them, before the way that you respond around them, that there is a wicked seed that haven't taken root into your heart and now is starting to manifest itself. So this omnichrome demon have sown many different seeds of darkness into the population. Uh, one of the number ones is a seed of fear. And this seed of fear started to manifest itself. I was reading a book by Dr. Carolyn Leaf, and she said uh, 80 to 90 percent of all diseases and illnesses can be related to stress and fear. Or the worsening of it. Um, and that's what the enemy have done. And it began to manifest itself. If you start to believe that you're sick, if you're ill, you're going to begin to manifest those symptoms. Your stress levels will go high. Your body biochemistry will get out of whack. And you will begin to manifest abnormal symptoms. This is in my word. I'm not no doctor. I've just read um, doctors. And I read this book maybe seven or eight years ago uh, um, by Dr. Carolyn Leaf. I can't think of the name of it. Um, it's called a Renew Mind, I believe. Um, uh, I'll get that later on. But uh, I'm just reiterating people who are accredited uh, medical doctors in their field of study. And so the enemy works on the mind. He wants to sow a seed into the minds of the people. I I wanted to go to the book of Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 13, because it talks about the seed sowing demon and how it operates and then how it manifests itself. And it also talks about um, much more than that which we'll have to get into in another video because we have gone over 40 minutes and I probably have bore, bore you. And I do apologize about that. Uh, let's see, I have my little marker here um, for the book of Daniel chapter 12. Uh, verse 1, that's where I wanted to go. I said, is it going to be too late when these people wake up? Um, and for many, it's going to be. It's going to be too late for them. Uh, and this is written up in the book of 
Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and this is where I wanted to end this and hopefully on the next video we'll dive into the book of Mark chapter 13 um, and we'll go into end time prophecies concerning this demon uh, that's being body slammed with this truth right now and it says and at that time when that Omicron manifests itself it says Michael shall stand up the great prince, um, which standeth for the children of the Most High Yah. So um, Christ is starting to stand up in us. And it says, many of them which sleep in the dust of the earth, these people who are asleep, shall awaken. It says, some to everlasting life. In some to shame and everlasting contempt. By the time that some of these people wake up, they're going to be put in shame. And contempt means um, you, they out of line, out of order. They're going to realize, my goodness, I've been deceived this whole time. Many going to been untook the mark of the beast. And realize they've taken the market of beast by the time they've waken up. They're going to been realize they sold their soul for a bowl of soup, a bowl of brimstone soup, but it's going to be too late. Go read that for yourself. That's the book of Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. People are going to wake up eventually. These sleep sheep, when they wake up, it's going to be to everlasting shame and condemnation. But you stay woke. And if you're not woke, wake up before it's too late so you can be blessed. But your boy MTAC has got to be his out. <laughs>